Hey there, native fish people. Um, today I'm going to answer one of the questions I get asked a lot. And uh, that question is, what do I use to catch my fish? And as you can see here, I've got quite a bit of equipment. You don't need all this, but uh, there are a few basic things that you do need. So I'm going to get started here and I'll go through everything I got. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to give you the three things or three or four things, maybe top five things that you absolutely need if you want to go collecting, okay? Now to get started, we're just going to start, you know, with your basic, your, your fishing pole. You don't need anything fancy, you know, whatever you're comfortable using, you know, from the cheap little, what is this, $10 Walmart special to something a little bit more fancy or more expensive. I mean, with your fishing pole, uh, you can catch uh, most sunfish species, you know, any of the sport fish species, your larger species of fish, all the way down to, uh, you can even go micro fishing and uh, catch your smallest darters and stuff uh, with your rod and reel. But uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, you know, uh, we had uh, other options for doing that. But with your fishing pole, you know, you just pick a fish pole that you're comfortable with. Now with that, you're going to need a little bit of tackle, okay? Now tackle you're going to need, you're just going to need, you know, some hooks. I, I uh, recommend just getting a small assortment of hooks, you know, from medium sized hooks down to smaller hooks, just depending on what you're fish for. With this kit here, as you can see, you know, there's my thumb. You can catch just about anything you want to catch that you're going to put in your fish tank with this. I mean, you're not going to go out and catch, you know, 10 pound bass or, you know, 30 pound catfish with, you know, with these hooks. I mean, it can be done, but, you know, if you ain't got the skill level, it's not going to happen. But for most of your fish that you're going to keep in your fish tank, you know, something like this is fine. And then you're going to need, a, you know, a type of sink or something that you kind of, kind of hold your bait in place, you know, hold it down or whatever. And uh, again, a small little assortment like this, a split shot that these things just squeeze onto your fishing line. That's all you need. And then uh, a lot of sunfish species and, you know, bass, some panfish. I would recommend fishing with a bobber, you know, a float. This uh, this goes above your line, you know, above your hook. Kind of like what we got down here, you know. Here, here's my bobber right here. And then you go down and uh, the hook is down here, see. You know, just, just a simple setup like that. And then, you know, with that, you know, you're going to need some live bait. You're going you're gonna to need something to put on your hook to catch those fish. And uh, depending what you get, I'd recommend, you know, either some worms some wax worms or uh, some minnows, you know, your basic fathead minnow that you can buy at your bait shop. Those three things will catch you just about anything you want to put in your fish tank, okay? And then, uh, depending on what your gear and how far you're going to go into this, you may want to get a small tackle box. You know, something like this is only like $6 at your local Walmart, and, and you put all your gear in there plus a little extras, you know, your phone or something else that, you know, that you're going to have with you out there. So. That's, that, that's the main thing. You know, your fish pool will get you just about anything you want in your fish tank. And, uh, you, you know, your sunfish species, your larger chubs, larger shiners. Like I said, you can do some micro fishing, but, you know, that's a whole different thing. We're not going to get into that today. All right, so now let's see what I'm going to use for everything else. Okay, now let's say you don't want to use a rod and reel. You know, you just want to go out and catch a couple shiners. Maybe a darter, you know, or, or a small mad tom or something. Just something quick, you know throw in your fish tank you know so with that said your other options are using nets now uh, you don't need anything fancy I mean this is my favorite net you know this is a little bit more expensive I mean if you're going out just once or twice to catch something for a tank once you're not going to get into collecting you don't need anything like this I mean don't get me wrong this is really nice but you don't need something like this this net runs a little pricey you know upwards $75 somewhere around there you don't need anything like that. I mean, you can get away with crafting your own net. I mean, this used to be an old fishing net. I just took an old laundry bag, slapped it on there, and then a, a little dusting handle or whatever. You can do it like that. Or run down to your local department store, your, your Walmart, Meyer, or whatever, and just buy a little uh, bait tank net. My kids... Used to use these all the time. I still use these all the time. And anybody I take with me, I always usually hand one of these to them. And uh, 
we've caught just about everything from garters to shiners to mad toms to dace just about anything you know it's and they're cheap they're, they're five dollars five dollars you can pick one of these up and then you can run out to your local creek or river and uh sweep around and catch you some fish okay now if you got a buddy and you guys want to catch a whole bunch of fish you, you know you got a couple friends that want some and whatnot a more efficient way is a minnow seine. Now, there's a bunch of different sizes. They range anywhere from uh, this one. I think this is the smallest one I found. It, it's a, a four foot single person seine. You, you can run this one by yourself, just run through the creek or whatnot. I'm not going to get into demonstrating how to use it right now, but uh, that's going to be a whole different episode here. But uh, yeah, you know, you can buy one of these. It, uh, they run, you know, 15, 20 bucks or something like that. To a little bit bigger one, this is more of a two person. Uh, oops, snagged up here. But this is an eight foot, I believe, eight foot or, or six or eight foot same. Um, if you've done this a while and, you, and you're in pretty good shape, you could run this by yourself. It takes a little bit more work and a little bit more effort. As you can see, it's pretty tore up, but you know, I'm about to do for a new one. But anyways, yeah, two people, one on each side, just run it through your creek. You can get all kinds of fish in this. Okay. Now, now that we've caught the fish, or hang on, one more thing. If you're one of those people that don't like getting wet or you're afraid something's going to brush up against you or something, a pair of waders comes in handy. Or if you, even if you're in cold water, or if you're out early season, a pair of chest waders. I recommend chest waders. You can get some hip waders. I only come up to here, but I, I recommend a you know a pair of chest waders. This is nothing fancy. This is just your your vinyl chest waders. Again, thirty bucks, forty bucks, or something like that. You can get a pair of these. Now, if you're just going out one time and uh, you don't plan on doing this a lot, I, I would just skip these and stand on the bank. You know, if you don't want to get in the water. But uh, also, a good pair of water shoes. You know. Eight swear or whatever. Just slap those on and a pair of shorts, you can walk right into the creek. Okay? Now we gotta get this stuff home, right? There's as you can see here, I got a few different options. Your best option, simple five-gallon bucket. Fill this up, and uh, this will carry most anything that you're gonna put in a fish tank. I mean, I've carried, you know, eight-inch sunfish in here, you know, suckers, chubs and stuff. And if you're going this route, uh, pick yourself up a bubbler. You know, something like this. It's a battery operator, runs on a couple of D batteries. Uh, it's got a hose, you know, a piece of airline, and an air stone on the end of it. On and off switch, turn that on, and that'll pump oxygen into your tank. And this will keep your fish alive and somewhat healthy until you can get them home. I mean, Unless you're going to be out, you know, all day for a couple days or a couple days or something, you know, like you're on a weekend adventure away from home, you may want to get something a little bit more, uh, a little larger or, so like I said, if you're just going on a quick trip at home, you know, all day trip or whatever, a bucket and an aerator is your go-to. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. But now, let's say you're going on a a weekend adventure or something, you know, or maybe, you know, two or three days, you're going to be away from home. You may want to, or let's say, let's say you're going after some bigger fish. You, you got a 600 gallon fish tank at home and you want some 12 and 12 inch bass, you know, and maybe a 12 inch catfish or something. You may want to go something like this, a large cooler with a spray bar uh, system in it. This kit right here, it's a spray bar. It's got your, uh, your uh, a bilge pump that runs on a 12 volt battery that pumps water, that sucks water in, pumps it through a hose, and then out a spray bar from one side of the cooler to the other. Something like this will keep large fish for, for uh, lively and healthy for you know most of the day if you got to go out something like that. But if you can't afford one of these, because this something like this is like 40 bucks or something. That little bubbler, you could put that in there too. Yeah, I know, that should be, as long as you don't get a whole bunch of fish in there, if you're just moving one or two fish, that bubbler would be just fine. So, you know, big fish, maybe a large cooler, uh, the bilge pump with the spray bar, and if you can't do that, 
just take that bubbler and throw it on that cooler, okay? Now let's say you're going away on a weekend trip, two, maybe three days or something, and uh, you're going to be hitting multiple spots. You're going to be bringing home multiple size fishes. Let's say you, you, know, you, you might get some little basses, and uh, you want to catch darters too at the same time, or maybe some pygmy sunfishes, and... Uh, some, you know, decent bluegills or something like that, or some catfish. You're going to want to keep them separated because you don't want them uh, eating each other or fighting too bad. I mean, yeah, you could take multiple buckets and stuff like that, but here's what I like to do. Go get yourself, go to your, your pet store or whatever, and just get some fish bags. Ask them, you know, say, hey, can I buy some fish bags off here? They're like 10 cents a piece or something. This is a really large one. You don't really need something this big unless you're getting, you know, some larger sunfish or something. But most of your standard size pet store bags, you know. And then you're going to need some rubber bands. And then here. Go ahead and get yourself, they're called bag buddies. It's a water conditioning tablet. And some of them have a, a slight sedative in there to calm the fish down and ease them. Get yourself some of those. You can zoom in a shot of that. Some bag buddies. When you're bought, bagging up your fish... Fill your bucket up with fresh water, you know, don't, don't use the water that your fish has been sitting on for the two hours that you've been down in that river. Get a clean bucket, get some fresh water. Throw one of them bag buddies in there, I, I believe it's one for like five gallons or something. One for a gallon, all right? Yeah, so you know, maybe drop one or two of those in there, let them fizz up, do their thing, okay? Then you take that water, fill your bag up a quarter of the way. And drop whatever you're fishing here. Don't don't overpack them. You know, depending on your fish, one or two little sunfishes in each bag. Or if you, you if you get darters, you can probably get four or five darters in a bag. You know, don't, don't overcrowd them unless you get a real big bag. You know, you get some more in there. And then uh, tie that bag shut. You know, like you would at the pet store. Zip it, spin it. You know, get the air in there. You don't need to pump air in there. Don't blow it. If if you want to do anything, just take your hose off your aerator. And let, let and take your air stone off and just stick that in there and let that fill up with air like that. Or you know you just capture the air with the bag. You know, something like let's see if we can do this, you know. Just go like that, you know. That's plenty good. Twist that bag real tight, you know. Bend that over. Wrap it shut. Okay? And then you're like, what do I do with those bags? I want to go back out and catch some more fish, right? That's when you just get yourself a little cooler. Alright? Take that cooler. Here's what I like to do. If it's a really hot day, you're gonna leave that cooler in your car. Put an ice pack in the bottom of it and lay a towel over top of that. And then you just take your fish, your your bags of fish, throw them in there like that. Okay. Depending on size of cooler, you can get two, three, four, five, six bags in there. Shut that. Put that back in your car or underneath your car or wherever you know. Back in your hotel room, or your camper, wh whatever you're doing, wherever you're staying, like that. Now those fish like that. They'll stay in here two, three days like that because it, it's just like shipping a fish. So now you get these fish and you can go out and spend another day or two on the water. So that, that's how I that's how I do manage everything. So I want a day trip, remember, a bucket, aerator. It's gonna be a couple days, a weekend or whatever. A cooler and some bags. That's the way I like to do it. Big fish, cooler net. Get your nets and everything else. Now, now remember, you're gonna be out there. A couple things you could really use. You don't need them, but get yourself a good field guide. These things are wonders, man. Not only do they show you where your fish are and stuff, you know, uh, ranges, but it helps you ID your fish there. So that way you're not bringing home an endangered species or anything. Also, make sure you get a phone yeah, or uh, a, a good quality camera because, you know, you may just want to take pictures of fish instead of bringing home something. You might catch something and you're like, oh, I don't want that in my tank, but I'm not going to have a picture. Your phone's got a picture. You can get a phone, you know. Uh, got a camera sorry a picture goofy but uh you know bring a camera with you to take pictures but a phone also just in case of emergencies you know you got this put this in a ziploc baggie or or a, a, one of those watertight phone cases and uh put it in your side your waiter pocket or you know somewhere with you on your person so that way you know if you're out in your water you, you slip you know a rock and break your ankle or something you can call okay also sunscreen a lot of times there's not a lot of shade over top of rivers or lakes or, you know, creeks and stuff where you're at. So, you know, protect yourself. You don't want to end up with some skin cancer or anything. A good sun, uh, sunscreen will do wonders, you know. Get some oh, SPF 30 or more. And stay hydrated. 
And we don't want you out there sweating your butt off all day. Yeah, you're going to be in the water, but still. You get sweaty, you get hot. Keep, stay hydrated. You don't need to be dying out there with heat exhaustion, okay? And one other little tip, a pocket knife. You know, you never know when you're walking through the water and you may get snagged on a uh, somebody's leftover fishing line and fishing hook in the water and it's all tangled up and pulling. So that way you cut that line or, you know, your net gets real tangled up or something. You know, it, it, a good pocket knife is always things. And a good set of Polaroid can, uh, sunglasses is awesome to have too. Because not only does this protect your eyes from the glare, the sun, and our sun and the glare on the water and everything, but with Polaroid glasses, you can kind of see into the water even easier. You know, the water's fairly clear and you can see the fish better. So, you know, that's always a good thing too. But yeah, that's my collecting gear and uh, what I use most of the time when I'm out collecting. We are now later on here in this series, I will be showing you how to use each piece of equipment uh, as we're out in the field. And I'll talk more about each one then. So if you like what you're watching, guys, don't forget to click that like button and to share it. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.